your line is crazy. Hi. Hi. Michaela. Um, how would you like me to address you? Because I get you as Jesse, but then it's Michaela. Whatever you want, so. <laughs> All right. Hello. So where am I here, Bender, folks? Water tribe. Two unbelievable grandmas that have been working real hard. Grandma. So grandma power rules. But let's get to it. From obviously we have at the far end Jack to set up Soka. Soka. Yeah. We have, we'll go from Soka to Soka. 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 It's a little M Night Shyamalan. I, I'm, from, I'm from back east. We don't really say things. Soka. It's Soka. It's Soka. It's Soka and Suki. It's Soki, Suki, and Soki. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so Jack Tassina, we've got uh, the lovely Jenny Kwan as Suki. Yeah! Now, Jesse is one of the few characters that actually has two names, but I'm only going to say one. Tof. No. Oh. Oh. Tof. But it's okay, because it's consistency. Zero for three. I'm zero for three. <laughs> <laughs> I like Dave's and Lou's and, and, you know, Adele's. I can do Adele's most people. <laughs> you got Adele down. I got Adele down. Her grandmother's down. Yeah. Oh, well, got Adele. So, well, no, Tof. Tof. Oh, I said Toph. I got the, the okay. long O, the Toph. Yeah, Toph. Yeah. I was thinking of Christopher yeah. Toph. All right. Yeah, All right. Are. Well, we are here to talk about the Air, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, <laughs> which it doesn't seem to be The Last Airbender because since you guys have done it, um, there's been a live action movie that mm -hmm. we may or may not want to talk about. We don't about. talk about <laughs> 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 yeah, no. that. You made it That's the twist. It didn't actually happen. There you go. <laughs> then there was a, 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 a kind of a rebootish kind of a show, Cora. and now there's another live action coming out. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> you guys are voice actors. No. And the great thing about voice actors is I feel like, I feel like this last two years, nobody in the industry has been more prepared for a, a quarantine than voice actors. How, how was your work in the last two years different? Now that you're doing it mostly from home. Uh, um, you're poison. Yeah. Eh, wait, do I? She um, chooses um, sides. <laughs> I have to. They're gonna get the hardcore avatar questions. I'm gonna yeah. get the industry questions. Um, for me, knock on wood, it's probably the busiest time I've been um, for voiceover because I have my own home setup, yeah. my own booth that. In the beginning of the pandemic, when the studios closed down, they wanted to work with people who had their own home studios. Now, let me tell you guys, um, I should probably post it, which is now being changed, but I made, I'm so proud of myself because I'm not very, uh, I'm not a good builder and I'm not very technical, but I built my own booth with my blanket <laughs> and I have my own setup, however, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little story. Do you, does anybody know of High Rise Invasion? Yeah. So I voiced my Ganise, and in, in the beginning of the pandemic, um, the director probably hates me because every other minute my internet was cutting out. Not my fault, <laughs> but I think it was because it was the beginning of the pandemic, so it was just so, in, it was insane. Like when I was dubbing to it, I wasn't even looking because the internet would be like, wah, 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 and like they'd be like, you just have to go faster or slower. So, Long story short, since I'm long-winded, um, it's been a very busy pandemic. I'm very grateful for people who even care. Um, so that's that's. And up until uh, Monday might be my last day of work of there. We'll see. But it's been it's been a very <laughs> fruitful. We'll see. We'll see. Well, that's Thank good. You. We start off with a nice little humble brag. That's good. I deserve that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just what it is. It is. You know, it is. Like, it's, You're just, I asked the it, question, it, you answered it. It's not <laughs> always been like that, for sure. That's right. So. That, that's, the, that's also what a lot of people don't understand is that oh you guys are gosh. gunslingers. And yeah, sometimes you, it's not. You may, you may get a dry spell. It has nothing to do with you. It just happens to be circumstance. It's the nature of the business. Yep. You know? So when you're doing great, I, that's good to hear. Thank you. Jack, how are you, have you got a home studio? I did. I, it's a very similar. Uh, I had a show that uh, was go, uh, had started before the pandemic, and we were like two seasons in, and then they were waiting and waiting, and they were like, well, wait till we can get back in person. And Is then that eventually, 
Uh, Lego Monkey Kid, shout out to... Who's got the Lego Monkey? Fantastic hey. <laughs> Devin cosplay back there as MK. Um, check that out on, on Amazon Kids, Lego Monkey Kid. Um, I'll do all the plugs. That's right. Uh, I'm here to help. Yeah, thank you. Because I, I saw the name, it's just, I haven't seen it, but it, that is a It's very new. I'm shocked that someone is dressed as... I love monkeys, <laughs> I love Lego. What else do you need? That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I had a, had a same sort of, like, had to set up the home booth, had to do the closet thing. Uh, had the bad internet, so I had to find a. I bought a very long Ethernet cable yep. that had to run yep, all up across the house. stairs yep. and was taped to my roof and then <laughs> strung across the bedroom. It was like a horrible trip hazard that we lived with while we had a three month old baby and we're carrying her up and down stairs and dodging Ethernet cables. It was a bad idea. Then, uh, then we. Uh, She's we, better off for it though. It's yeah. Tough yeah. baby now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like but, living in the yeah. Old West. It's, just, it's the end of that. She's got to learn to yes. tough it out. Yes. And, um, and then that show, as as studios have started opening back up, we were staying, we've just kind of like gotten, like now all the people on it had moved far enough away and spread out, and they're just like, let's stick with these remote records, which is cool. It's it's nice to like roll out of bed and do a whole TV show in your closet. <laughs> Not brush your teeth. Yeah, I never. Never brush never. your teeth from B.O. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hear your mic and you're like, uh-oh. No, it adds like vocal texture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I, you know, I got a, I got a thing on Tuesday, so I'm not gonna brush my teeth the next couple days. Yeah. <laughs> gotta get in character. Yeah. I was about to say, it's, I mean, that seems fitting at first, some of the people that you voice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 I go some gross people, yeah. <laughs> um, I was uh, not prepared at all for this whole at-home situation. I love going in the studio. Um, I don't mind brushing my teeth. Um, <laughs> Wait a Are you even really an actor? <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily like shoes, though. If they'd let me come in barefoot, I'd do that. But yeah, I actor. will brush my teeth. Um, maybe not my hair. We'll see. So exactly. yeah, I don't know. I like being in the studio. I like being able to see the director, talk with the sound engineer. If, if somebody else was recording, I like that. So I was used to doing, you know, some auditions remotely, but usually in in studio, and definitely not working remotely ever. So. I started out not having the right equipment, uh, and it just took me a second because I had to do so much research, and then I was like, do I have to spend $10,000 on a microphone? And I was like, no, 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 I only have to spend a couple hundred dollars. That's okay. I can do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was like, do I get a USB one? That doesn't seem like good. So I had to do a lot of research um, to figure out what the heck I was doing. Um, and then finally, I mean, it's crazy because the auditions were, were a lot. The auditioning has been kind of through the roof. but. It's also been so much more competitive, uh, and I just did not book anything until like a month ago, and I've been auditioning nonstop, nonstop for over a year, over a year, yeah, so over like a year and a half. Um, so yeah, industry, fun. Uh, but I finally <laughs> figured it out, and um, I did my first closet session, actually, uh, for real, real dubbing, and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope everything works. Uh, it was just like a moment of panic, but it all went well, and. Um, Microphone is cooperative, Source Connect is cooperative. Were your Wi-Fi. neighbors cooperative? That's the biggest That's, problem. You know, actually, there was a trash truck outside it's five a minutes before, and I was like, please, dear heavens, get the trash and leave. Just leave, please. And they did. They did. Leave. Do you get that tension when they show up? It's like, I have so much anxiety. It's like, I don't know about they show anybody up, else. I gotta deal with everything. Right everything. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a sound. I'm like, there's a noise, there's a light. So I'm like, are we, is it fine? <laughs> like, what's happening? Are you yeah. still friends with your neighbors? with their leaf blowers and their uh, remodels? Oh, someone had construction the whole pandemic. I'd be like, shut up! But they can't hear me because I'm in my booth. <laughs> you know? I, did, I did a little introduction when I first, I moved into a new apartment this last September, and I, I like to do little intro notes like for the people who were like in my entry, where I'd be like, hi, I'm Michaela. Like, I have a dog, and like, nice to be your neighbor, and hi, I'm a voiceover artist, and blah, 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 blah. Um, and so I kind of, like slipped that in there and gave them my phone number so that if anything happens where they're being super loud, they're like, hey, like I'm recording a session, like, you know, I like mentioned I was an artist, I actually am like recording in my closet right now. Do you mind? So then they could have some some backstory so it wouldn't be out of the blue. So I prepped in case I have to text, but I haven't had to yet. It's also useful in the other direction uh, if you're about to be super loud. Yeah. And scr- I had to, yes. I for a, for a, a horror movie, a live action horror movie <laughs> that I did, yeah. 
that uh, we then had to do some ADR for over the uh, over the, the beginning of the pandemic. And I uh, to you know cover your ears, but it was a, it was a sex scene, and I yeah, so, Jack, oh, and I mean, it happens off camera. Wait, Nothing look at that me. would. Uh, <laughs> it was, it's like it's a grunt, whatever. Uh, the, the point was, I had to stay in my closet, which shares a wall with in your my neighbors. Closet? Yeah, and I was just making loud. a sex movie. I had to make a loud sex Got movie it. in my closet, just the sound. Part. <laughs> so that's good to send them a text. You live in the valley. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 That sounds like a good title for like a mixtape. I'm like, sure they've heard that yeah. before in that part. They're like, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good little segue. Uh, to what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I always like to ask this question of uh, voiceover actors because when you do a lot of ADR, it's not just redoing lines, it's redoing noises. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Redoing, yeah. It's pickups. You've got to do little grunts and groans and things. So, what's the weirdest noise? you've had to make, I either on purpose or by accident that they used, but what is the weirdest noise that you've had to make? Well, go, can you tell I'm a theater actor because I'm not even using the mic, I have like this She's loud. enunciating and projecting. Um, going off of Jack's movie, just last week, and I'm going to dub, this is my last job, literally last Wednesday, I couldn't post it because it, the show hasn't come out, but breaking basically, news, news. I was just having Press. sex on film, and I was like, uh, sex voice actor for hire. Like, literally, <laughs> that's for like half an hour. I was like, all right, I'm taking off my jacket, here we go. And they're like, that was awesome. One take, I'm like, that okay. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Do you get paid by the minute for that? Um, I think it's just for <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's five ninety nine for a minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, do do do. Yeah, so maybe that's the weirdest. I'm trying to think what else. Like, I think efforts are really interesting. When you're dying and you're gurgling, trying to make it sound like you're gurgling yeah. and the yeah. blood is yeah. coming up in your throat, that's kind of wild, you know? Like, oh, like to make it sound really juicy. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> also, the the like great joy of largely having done like I've done. Uh, Comedic characters on action shows means like my efforts can be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like most of the time, I get away with not having to do like a very like sincere, serious action thing. Yeah. It's just going, <laughs> uh, which is great. It feels great. It's very freeing. Well, recently, actually, well, one throwback because you said the segue was making a sex move in your closet. I had to do, I don't know if you remember. I just said weird noises, but yes, you're going to have sex in the closet. What you took away was sex in the closet, that's fine. <laughs> the uh, Ghost of Girlfriend Past, do you remember that movie? Yep. Does anyone mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. yeah. So in, there was like, the, one of the throwback scenes where there was a bunch of teenagers in the basement and they were partying and making out. And there was a specific, um, moment where Emma Stone was like making out with the guy and they were like rolling along the wall. They needed dub in for that, their make out. So I had to be Emma Stone making out, <laughs> rolling against the wall. <laughs> so that was fun and I, they were, it, it was the way that loop groups sometimes work is you just have a group of people and they're like, okay, cool, who can like do this? And you kind of just volunteer. So I was like, I got this. Um, and I just used my arm as make out material and just went ham, so that was fun. Um, but recently, I feel Do like- Do you feel like you made out in a particularly Emma Stone way? I like watched her face. I tried to like watch back? her body and like match it and just make the voice like, okay. yeah, I, I'm did, sure I tried. I'm sure you touched it. Why? I used it, so it's there. Uh -huh. You can hear it like murmuring in the back and you're like, uh-huh, there she um, is. That movie is pretty fun, by the way. It's great. I love that movie. I do too. And I'll have to rewatch it. Yeah, the, uh, recently I was, I'm doing a, a dub, the English dub for Platinum End, it's a new show from Creators of Death Note, and copying the J's, the Japanese, uh, like, reactions, because they're so sweet, they're just like, oh! and so like, anytime I get to, like, do that, I'm like, yes, it's so fun, and it's so not, like, normal, and just going like, oh, you know, just like those moments, it's great, it makes me so happy every time. And it's always usually one take, which makes me like, it's a little confidence booster. They're like, yeah, that worked. Yeah, that's the sound. Great. That's fun. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to open up to questions, and of course, this is where I'm going to rely on you guys. I already told you that uh, this room is full. we got standing room only. I want to see some hands in the air. You've had two years to think about being here. <laughs> two years. Um, who has questions for any of these wonderful folks that are here? Um, right there, one of the uh, hobbits in the back there. Yeah, I saw you guys come in. So which, which hobbit are you? Oh, Pippin, and I am on a quest to find a mystical meal. I'm sure you all know. Wait, wait, 
Okay, so wait, hold on. You're doing a demo now? What's the question? <laughs> it's not an audition. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I'll say, so <clears throat> in terms of, you know, uh, 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 typically, you know, they're building the expression, like in terms of the, the visuals are, are usually coming after um, the, the audio. The initial like uh, storyboarding and stuff will, will usually come off of the, the voice recording. So in terms of just like breaking down a script and, and finding those moments and those differences, I don't, yeah, I guess I don't think of it as like, full like this scene ha is this sort of expressive mode. It's more just like moment to moment, who is this character, what do they want, what are they thinking, really finding the, the character and the flow in that scene rather than sort of thinking in the big arc ways. Is, is that and, and you're not recording linearly either. I mean, not, not necessarily. So yeah. you don't have to be like super happy and then immediately go whatever. You, ha you can take a second. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gather yourself. Depending. So. Depending yeah. on, yeah. sometimes you do flip on a dime. Well, if it's in the scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the first things that I feel like I say when people are like, oh, do you have any like tips about getting into voice acting? Or like, how did it develop? I'm like, well, voice acting is acting, first of all. And I feel like you really need to be aware that it's merging the two. Um, so like taking an acting class. Because in order to be able to smooth over those transitions, if you're going from a scene where suddenly you're falling apart and having a mental breakdown, and then you have to go to their intro scene where they're just like happy and chilling, you have to be able to to switch that mentality. Me personally, similar to kind of what Jack was saying, I feel like I just have a lot of, first of all, like personal experience. We live life, right? We're used to, to doing things that make us happy and sad and annoyed and frustrated and confused. And so those things are always just kind of fresh in one sense. They're always just kind of open. I kind of just always have a tangible feel on any emotion really and that's I think why actors are like a little psycho we have to have these <laughs> reservoirs open and functioning right so that we can just whip them out really quickly um, and voice acting is no different in my opinion when, when done correctly you also have all of those feelings very fresh and ready to go so yeah that's how I yeah I, I in my experience like the easiest way to access those emotions is to not be thinking about the emotion to be thinking about like what is the character wanting to do in this moment? And great, that's gonna express itself as frustration or happiness or whatever, but I don't go into the scene going like, now say it the happiest you can. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> See, we got Spider-Man, since it's your weekend. <laughs> Make it a good one. You only get one, you don't get multi. Your personalities match your characters like Jack. Would you drink Captain Jack? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so fast. Like, I'm, I'm just, like, wildly, recklessly, so quickly, I would definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. I have a feeling he's on Cactus Juice now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, the wear doesn't match. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> I can also attest that yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I other would. people should answer for you, like, do you match your... <laughs> do you feel like you're similar to Suki? Um, I would only hope I could match some of her characteristics. Yes. Um, yes. Because I think that she's, she's such a great role model, as well as she has a lot of depth, too. Um, so I'd hope so. You know, if I was playing an evil character, too, I mean... <laughs> They're misunderstood, but as far as Suki goes, like she is a stand-up person and um, always does her best or tries to do her best and, and wants to do things for community. So I think if I even match some of that, then I'm doing halfway good. So. And that answer was telling in and of itself. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, but yes. Um, I, yes, uh, feel like I too am stubborn and opinionated and often feel like I can take care of myself. And I'm like, no, no. 
friends. It's okay. It's okay to have friends. Uh, it's okay to ask your family for help and to let other opinions live. Um, I have grown up and been much better about that. I'm 27. I don't know how old all of you are. But uh, yeah, college was a lot of figuring that out. Um, yeah, so I feel like especially as a, as a younger kid, I was totally, yeah, on, on par for that. And I thought the whole running away from home thing, I was like, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah, if I was in that circumstance, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> how many people have packed a bag at some point? And, and I'm moving. You didn't Left do anything. Left a note, walked down the block, <laughs> Not even sitting on the edge. Just packed a bag. I mean, yeah. I, I only got to the bag. Oh, I left. Well, that's you. <laughs> You're far more committed. I walked around the corner and like sat on the corner, just like stared at the sky and thought about the, <laughs> I about the I realized as soon as I filled up my stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm screwed if I leave this house. Yeah, right. I got nothing. I don't have, I, I don't have a wallet. I'm like nine. What's going on? So, I think I also was nine. Why do you have to go back to nine then? Nasty nine. You know, those nasty. Tattoos, nasty nine. Anybody on this side have a question? I think gentleman with a hat. All right, Jesse. So when... Toph broke out of the metal box. <laughs> yes. How did you feel voicing that, knowing everything that you went through to that point? Mm. Um, first of all, you, I was 12. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thought was, cool, I beat the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. sounds about right. So that was first off. Um, but the, I mean, just like her, she's frustrated when she can't figure something out. But as soon as she does, there's not this moment of like, Good yes, episode. I did it. She's just like, there, I'm supposed to figure it out. Like, this is supposed to be easy. So there's more frustration, I feel like, beforehand. So as soon as that happened, it was kind of like, yes, more capability, like leveling up. It was more of like an excitement <laughs> as opposed to like a, yes, yeah, she finally like did it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of cool because also watching her just Bend, her bending kept just improving over the course of the mm -hmm. show, right? And she's just so good. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried, believe me, I tried alone in my backyard. <laughs> tried to make it happen. I've tried to fly. You try, how, you try with the Harry Potter ones, you try, right? You just, you're like, you know what? I just gotta make sure. Uh, and it just got so, so good that really, like, whenever they were in their final fighting sequences towards the end of the third season, that's where I really was just like, damn, she's so good. Like, where would we be without Toph and Appa? I don't know. <laughs> Especially Appa. Appa's number one. I'm like, we would be nowhere. We would be dead. Appa literally carries the show. <laughs> we would be in the same place. The whole thing. Yeah. But yeah. Very good. Right there, the young man there. Um, your favorite did you guys listen? Nope. Nope. Right there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Nope. The young man. You're. You're. You're younger than me, but this kid's like, what are you? Not twelve? Did I get you right? Right on the number. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thank you! You have a excellent birthday, okay? What was your favorite scene to voice acting? Your favorite airbender voice acting scene. Thank you. Good question. So I was really like honored and excited to do a lot of um, the more dramatic stuff. Uh, Sokka and UA and dealing with the loss of UA. Mm. Um, that was all really cool and really fun. <laughs> but the, <laughs> but, uh, but a hundred percent the answer is the cactus juice scene. Because <laughs> all of it, all the mushy giant friend, all of it, all of the uh, desert. I mean, that's the, that's the best. And happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I was jealous I, I didn't get to partake in the insanity because I, I wasn't like allowed to have the cactus juice as soon as he went crazy and I was like, but I, that would have been fun. You were very tall. He was 15, 15? Recording it? I'm no, 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 I meant like in the- in The character the, yeah. was 15. I was probably, I was a college <laughs> freshman, so I was, you know, a lot to experiment. In Europe, it's totally different. That's so true. In Europe, <laughs> 12 was out of the, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm trying to think, you know, when people ask me, I. I I always have variations. I mean, of course, I loved, you know, my first introduction, especially when I was giving Sokka, you know, messing with him, you know, with his, uh, let's just say, somewhat misogynistic viewpoints at <laughs> the very beginning. There were some lessons to be learned. A little bit, but then you finally came around. Um, but I must say, I really do, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear the comment about UA. <laughs> I know. I'm so grateful to my friend here. Um, but I do. I must say that 
when you talk about just the more kind of in-depth sort of intimate scenes, the scene that Sokka and Suki had together in Serpent's Pass was one of the first that I was like, oh wow, this is the moment to moment acting. This is where I get to tell the story about Jack now that he already knows, and maybe some of you <laughs> don't know. So when we recorded that scene, it was only he and I, and I'm only a, a few years older than Jack, but we recorded in North Hollywood um, at a specific voiceover studio. And so it was, we were in this really small booth and our director was there and I never knew what we were gonna record. Well, that was the day that we recorded Serpent's Pass. So I walk in and, you know, because I wasn't like a series regular on the show, like they kept bringing Suki back and I would never know and like I was out of town on tour and so like this is one of the times I've had to come back and so we were recording the scene and I was reading it through and I was like, oh gosh, okay. So I walk in and Jack's like this. <laughs> And I was like, hi. And he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> you know, and so we start to do the scene, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is, you know, like kind of their, when they come together, kind of their intimate moment here where they reveal their feelings for each other, and they talk about Iwe and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so then I don't know why we started talking about this, but I think that's when you first got in college. And I was like, Somehow our ages came up and I was like, oh no, I am like so much older than you. And he's like, I think I saw this sigh of relief, like, oh, like, oh my gosh, she really doesn't like me, so I'm okay. So he's like, okay, so anyway, Jenny, and I was like, oh my gosh, now that he knows I'm so much older, now it's okay to talk to me, you know, so. I was like, I was nervous. No, I didn't know that. I was nervous because I was like, he thinks I'm like this weird girl, whatever, that I'm just like, hi, oh my gosh, I really am like Suki, and I really am like, you know, but, so, but now when I watch it back, I was like, that was a good scene. That was one of my favorites. See, this is the drama you miss when you're 12 and everybody else is an adult. I was in school, like, what? Come on. Uh, uh, I, I really liked, for, we you know, keep talking about these heartfelt moments, but Tales of Bossing Say was a joy and a half because those lines are so different. And we don't get to see Toph in a usually, you know, a stereotypical feminine lens, right? She is tomboy tough, she wakes up and, you know, it's a healthy coating of earth and not dirt, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. So it was nice to have her give in to Katara's like, we're gonna have a spa day, it's gonna be great. And then she also has fun with the bending while she's there and, you know, bends the mud and then the girls make fun of her and she's just like, it's fine, like, I know who I am, but you can tell that she kind of enjoys it, right? She's never really had a, a friend to go do something like that with. She's always just been rebelling against her parents. Um, so that was really nice to record because it was just a little gentler than we usually see, you know, talk in. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, everything else is usually just like a one-liner joke. So um, <laughs> those, of course, are always a joy. But yeah, I really like Tales of Boston mm. for more reasons than one. So yeah. Nice. Well, now I'll go to the Slightly older young man <laughs> in the white t-shirt. Yes. Um, I want to ask um, if you guys were able to bend in real life, what would you like to bend? And um, a little, <laughs> add a little spice to it. Um, your, we live in a society similar to the one in the legends of Katara, like the city where everybody's using bending very often for their usual job. So what kind of bending job would you like? Is that what I'm hearing? Basically. Because I'm yeah. translating that properly? Yeah. So what kind of bending job would you like? Well, then I'm definitely going for like sports stuff. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something you can the make a lot of money in. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Uh, but water, for sure. I'm very loyal to the water tribe. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to I wanna pretend that I'm a good person and say, like, I'd be a healer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are the only one with a kid right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I right. I had a kid working at a water park. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> very just fun. constantly making people go down the slide. Very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> Sharp turns. I would probably be a lava bender, actually, um, because I think I'm a mix of earth and fire. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'd probably be a lava bender, but I don't know what. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> what like job is that? Like a, like a welder, smelter, make glass? I don't yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, probably something artsy. I mean, honestly, I'd love to, because, you know, I am a performer. 
So maybe some sort of lava show. I could like create some sort of entertainment like situation. Like fire dancer. Yes, yes. Lava yeah, I, mm -hmm. Do some lava poi. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's both. It's both. It's, it's both. both. It's the like tyrant, but it's also the these yeah. things. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you are from the valley. I don't know what <laughs> those mean. The same thing. Okay. <laughs> Only thing I know about Hawaii is that when you blow the conch shell. Yeah. Because they did that at my wedding. Uh, it's called poo. So I paid extra for them to blow poo at the awesome. awesome. Just so I could say that. Uh, my wife thought that was ridiculous. Uh, She's like, we're paying that much for someone to blow a conch shell? They're blowing poo. They're blowing poo. <laughs> we like that. We're gonna say that for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Wait, okay, so the question was, what, 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 job? what would you what, bend? What bending job? So you have to, what kind of things would you like to bend, but then you have to throw in a job as well. So a career, Bending situation. <laughs> Do you have to go to like community college for this? Or is this uh, like, like, what? Uh, you know what? You kind of. It's gonna sound like I'm copying yours a little bit, but it's a little bit different. Like when people have asked me that before, in reference to Avatar, I've. I've always wanted to be able to bend water. I love the ocean, but I'm also terrified of it. And I grew up here, right? So I grew up at the water. So in terms of just earth, wind, fire, water, water. Mm -hmm. If I were to bend something and you guys are gonna be like, they're just saying that. Um, and this is kind of a little bit more um, esoteric, I guess, but thoughts maybe. And not in a good way, not a Zula way where I would bend your thoughts for evil, not like that. <laughs> but I think just, I think we can really use a little bit more of um, healing our thoughts, right? So that water therapy, so that we can do better for ourselves and better for each other. And I think right now we can really use that. So things, you know, like you guys have such a passion here, and I think that is a really strong energy. So in my real life, if I wasn't acting, maybe I would be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. So more of a permission-based thought bending. Yeah. Cause, sure. Because you if you're not, you're doing it. <laughs> I don't know. But that's a whole ethics quandary if you're not doing it with the. Then we're right. into blood bending. That, that's and, uh, yeah, exactly. So that's what I mean. It's like a little. It's a sticky wicket. Right. Right. But I think in the terms of using it for Good. the benefit of humanity. Really. Mm. Or your version of it, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's all perspective. So I want to go to anybody on this side, because in the multicolored tie-dye pajamas? Or is that just a sweatshirt? A hoodie. I can't see below. It's all I can see is hoodie. It look, my wife has pajamas just like it. Oh. <laughs> I knew it was a hoodie. Thank you. I knew it was a hoodie, too. My wife's pajamas have hoods. Go ahead. <laughs> it's got a lot of weird stuff. Go ahead. Um, when you were children, did you ever imagine that this is where you would be as an adult, as a voice actor? And do you think your child self would be amazed with your current self? Oh. Oh man, this yeah. is going to be deep. I'm going to get some crying here. Um, well, you guys started your super. Yeah, I mean, I was a child. Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, so are you surprised about where you are? I guess I'm surprised that we're still talking about this show. I didn't know it was going to be this good. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think so. Like, before, like when I was starting acting and breaking into it, like, I think I, uh, I, I, I would be so excited to know that, I'm, that it, I have made a career out of it and I get to do more of it. I love it. I'll say specifically, like, one of the cartoons before I started doing voiceover that I completely adored was Batman the Animated Series. Yes. Ooh. And we shared a voice director, Andrea Romano, uh, voice directed Avatar and did yeah. uh, Batman the Animated Series. So like right away, it was an immediate like, whoa, I'm working with, and she also did Animaniacs, which was one of my favorite But that was like, as I started into voice acting, I was like, whoa, and I'm getting to learn it from someone who crafted, helped craft this thing that I, you know, that made me want to get into it in the first place. So, um, yeah, telling my childhood self, I mean, especially telling myself that, like, uh, going into myself at 12 and going, like, yeah, in, like, four years, you're going to be <laughs> getting a real chance to do that, and then you're going to get to do it for, for the next 15. Um, it's been amazing. I'm so honored every day that I get to keep doing it, and, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Jack. 
in 15 years, you're gonna be able to simulate sex in a closet. <laughs> 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 That's a really good question, Jack, right? Um, so when I, I started acting when I was 11, and um, I was deathly, deathly shy. Like, it was so painful. I started singing and acting at the same time, and I just told this story the other day that my singing teacher was probably like, oh my gosh, get her out of here, because I literally was like a mute. I would just stand like, uh, and then I would sing. Um, but one of my first jobs, I voiced, um, Audrey in Little Shop, it was a cartoon that was based off of Little Shop of Horrors. And then I, did, I didn't get a job for a long time and I just feel very fortunate. I would never have imagined that voiceover would take me to where I am now. I'm very grateful for it and I'm grateful for anybody who supports it. A couple years back, I'll, I'll just share, sorry I talk a lot, but a couple, like a, more than a few years back, I. Then this happens, but I booked this national commercial, and literally I had to say four words, I won't say just in case someone hears the commercial, <laughs> and they replaced me in the middle of the session. <gasps> yeah, what? because I couldn't say four words, and at the time there were like 12 executives, this is how it is sometimes, there were 12 executives on the other side, and I couldn't say four words right, and so I knew it in my bones that I was like, Oh, they, I think I just got fired. They didn't say anything. They just said, okay, thanks, Jenny. And I was like, okay. Literally, I went in the parking lot and I just cried because I was like, I can't do this. I don't think I should be doing this. I don't, you know, and so I stopped for a while. And then when I wanted to get back into voiceover, I was like, okay, it's going to be a vision of mine that I'm going to, this is going to, I'm going to re- vamp myself. I was doing on camera, I was doing theater, but I really, really wanted to get back to my voiceover roots. And so to sit here today is a little bit emotional for me because I literally almost quit because I thought I couldn't do it, you know, because they were like, oh, she's not good. She couldn't say four words, you know, but it just, that happens in the business. Like it happens all the time, you know, like one of my first animes, they were like, Jenny, it's just because you haven't done it, but we're, we're gonna kind of demote you, but don't quit. And so I was on the anime and like now I'm like, I can't stop doing it, like it's been insane. So I'm just really truly grateful and, and Avatar has been great. You know, I learned so much with that and I love working with people who are just so amazing and talented and just, I'm just grateful for all you guys. So to think, yes, like it was, it's been a journey for me to keep in this, doing this and, and I don't take that for granted. Okay, first of all, <laughs> that is the 12 executives. It's four words, guys. It's a commercial. That's like, it'll work. <laughs> Good. And I she's not it. cursing. There I, are young twinkle toes here. Okay. I, I thought it was me. It wasn't me. No, it's not you. But I mean, in the, in the commercial, I thought it was me, but it sounded exactly like me. And I was like, I think it's me, but I don't think it is. I have to call EP Talent. And then they called you? Okay, but if it's that, okay. I'm not sure that I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm continue. Okay, well, so stay at the top. We're getting to the very aggressive. Okay, uh, so uh, no, I wanted to be a cardiovascular surgeon. I was planning on acting until I was 14. It was very, lots of goals. I was like, okay, I'm going to act and get my name on the Walk of Fame by 14. <laughs> and then I'm going to stop acting and I'm going to go intense science and math mode. And then I'm going to go to UPenn for pre med and go to med school and be a heart surgeon. It's just all planned out. Um, well, I ended up going to Yale, a little different, not bad though, very grateful, uh, and then I was like, I couldn't even, yeah, very low tier, awful, uh, and I couldn't even go to a biology class, couldn't even go, I needed a gap year, I needed a gap year, uh, and I just couldn't do it, I didn't even walk into a science class the entire time I was an undergrad, and so I was like, wow. What, am, what are you doing? What are you looking at myself in the mirror? What are you doing? Uh, we're here. We're supposed to be doing the thing. And I just didn't. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm happy for that. I, one of my closest friends is now in med school doing the whole thing. Not for me. I don't agree with a crap ton of things that they decide are medicine in this country. Um, for me personally, just never done my thing. So I was like, well, that wouldn't make sense. So I found my way back. I ended up double majoring in theater and film. 
concentration in writing, uh, and I wasn't really doing voiceover for a while. Um, I occasionally sent in an audition, but I was in Connecticut, so a lot of stuff is in LA, so it just was whatever. Uh, and then I was in New York for a few years, and really, the quarantine is what brought me back to it for real, for real, because I was still in New York. I was like singing with a cover band, trying to audition for theater like a psycho person, because I also mm -hmm. love musical theater. Uh, and yeah, that's why then like I do any research to find the the closet microphone and the the audio interface and all this stuff. So it kind of just brought me back to it, and I was like, okay, it, w I need at this point I need to do things with like a full yes or not at all, right? Anything that you're doing just with like fifty percent. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? do it with everything or do it with nothing? So I was like, okay, if I'm doing this, I need to really do it. So I've just been really good about sending in every single audition. I make sure it's in on time. I make sure I have multiple takes. I think about the direct, whatever, um, and it's just been a little slow. <laughs> like I said, I, it took me like over a year, and I have an agent, and I have a resume. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are like, I'm not booking anything, mm -hmm. it's not you. Like, it is just crazy right now. So uh, yeah, and I finally booked something, and I was so excited. I was so excited, and like, you don't necessarily know how happy you are doing something until finally something happens that's supposed to, because you're just like, throwing stuff into an empty void, and you're like, hopefully somebody likes this. Uh, and I was like, I do like this, and I'm good at it. And there was like that reminder of like, you're good at it, and you enjoy it, this is a good thing. So I think younger me would be confused, because I was like, wait, <laughs> you're supposed to be a doctor. Uh, so I think they'd be confused, but like thinking, oh cool, you can still do that, and you're still working. So I'm still, I'm still growing, <laughs> uh, and still moving, and figuring life out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, but I, I, you know, it's similar to the, the children's of their past as well. Uh, you can probably just be like, cool, glad that you're still doing it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Right up front. Um, who's your favorite character that isn't the character you voice at? Uncle Iroh. Next. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will say a different one. <laughs> you can even say, I'll say Momo. Oh. <laughs> a very close second. Mine's Appa. Uh. You know, I love that we get to have our moment in, in the chase, the episode where I decide to run away and say, I can take care of myself, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then they cross paths and just have tea, and they have no idea that everyone on their side is just like attacking each other and they're just like having some tea. I'm like, ah, oh, it's a moment of peace. That really like locked it in for me. But yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> the one on this side here. In the yellow shirt. Uh, who are you playing um, in Father Man? <clears throat> Sorry, as I'm like chugging water. Um, Nase, she's like the, the main angel for Mirai. Um, and yeah, the special link angel. You see her in the intro episode. She basically just explains the entire premise and then she goes down to like a couple lines per episode, which is actually appreciated because I was I was there for hours and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many lines. <laughs> uh, but it was just the intro episode, so yeah, that's who I was. For an exposition angel? Yes, oh. for the, the first episode, yeah. Okay. Hey, that's, that's always good. You know, exposition yes. is the backbone of every story. It is indeed. <laughs> Another one up front. All right, this is weirdly specific, but if your character had a phone in a ringtone, what would their ringtone be? Oh. Now, did you wait a second? Did you just do that because her phone rang? <laughs> gave me the idea. No, it's she not. Kaiser so Soze this. This is a Kaiser <laughs> Soze situation. <laughs> so. so, what would our ringtone be? Yeah. Like our character's ringtone would be? Of course, there's gonna be phones. Hmm. I think. <laughs> Still thinking. <laughs> Um, the thing that I'm trying to avoid saying because of present company is, can I just have one more moon dance with you? Oh. Oh. This would be very oh. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, so, so you know, it could be just something as simple as like I wanna rock, and just like yeah. something like classic '80s. I don't know. Um, and but main thing, she always has on vibrate because that's honestly how she's gonna know her phone is ringing. Yeah. Than, than anything else. <laughs> um, 
You guys may have heard it, but it works perfectly for Suki because it was written for her. Kathleen R Lynn Rose, um, she's a TikTok artist. Yes, she wrote so a song called Fight Like a Girl um, about Suki, so obviously that one. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. You guys completely missed the fact you could have had a song by Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Wind and Fire. No, no, I don't. <laughs> we don't want Wind and Fire. All right. Oh, we had a little, little bow. I like the cute little bow you've got Aww. there. Oh, here we go. This is going to be good. Therapy. What's the worst part of voice acting? Hardest part. Oh, the hardest part. I heard worse. Sorry. Oh. It's the hardest part. Yes, to a stutter. Sometimes I, I do have a, a stutter, so that can be tough. Um, uh, 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 protecting your voice, that I think, is like the, the physical and technical aspects of it are a thing you don't uh, know going into it, but it, it is like uh, you have to really um, be careful of how you're using your instrument and drink a lot of water and, and get some rest and all of those type of things. Um, and just like keep in control of your breath as you're doing a surprisingly physical thing for just you're standing in like a little two by two box, but it, it can be quite like physically intense. Um, yeah, that and like a really emotional scene. <laughs> can we tell? Mm -hmm. um, I was just gonna say the same thing. It's uh, even I can talk without a mic, but I'm like, you better use a mic. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your voice on trying to, you know, be a martyr. But protecting your voice, taking care of it, self care. Um, because sometimes, like Jack was saying, we have to do efforts which are like uh, dying, uh, screaming, jumping. Yeah. Literally, like the other day, I was doing that for an hour and a half, and I was like, okay, get, okay, no more, no more. And um, that can be pretty taxing. You know what's really weird, too? When you have to pant like, and run, and I'm like, okay, now I'm dizzy. Like, that's like the worst thing. But, um, and laughing, for me, laughing is really weird on my, on my chords. So just a lot of self-care when you're really um, using your voice. Like someone was told me once, like a speech therapist, Jenny, you know, you're like a, um, a pro football player. You know, pro football players afterwards, they get iced and they get massaged. You have to do that for the same, for your voice. You know, like you have to always, they have like voice massages and I was looking for it and I never knew it existed and I knew it did. Finally, I found it. So just a lot of self-care. Mm. I did voice. not know that. That's yeah, nice. that's mm -hmm. right. Cool. I, I will should give you her number. I bet. I don't know. Okay. That's cool. I'll give you her um, number. For me, the hardest thing is remembering that I'm performing. Because when you're used to performing, when you're on stage and there's lights in front of you and there's a camera, you remember that you're performing, right? But when you're in a booth and there's a microphone, I have a mind that tends to wander. So uh, there are moments where I'm just, it could be a line, it could be somebody's outfit, and I'm all of a sudden thinking about how, like, yeah, I do want to make a fashion line one day. You know, that shirt might be kind of cool. What if I find it? And then they're, like, recording a line. I need to remember that I am performing. Um, that is my biggest thing. And thankfully, I always, I do. Like, it's not like I've recorded a whole episode where, like, I just wasn't paying attention. But I do have to keep bringing myself back into, like, what the line is, what the scene is, being in that moment. Um, yeah, so that's probably my personal hardest thing. I'm just reminded uh, because you said like panting and almost making you pass out. I have a, I'm doing a, uh, I'm on a Netflix show right now called Dr The Dragon Prince, which Woo! you should check out. Yeah! And I have a character who, uh, like a spell that I commonly cast is like a, I, I take a big breath and I blow a, like a mighty wind and I almost pass out literally every time. <laughs> and I, I've, I've not figured out how to do that how where do I that. don't immediately Smart. just like run out of breath and slam it on the microphone. Yeah, so everyone's listening to the Dragon Prince waiting for that and you're like, <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. They didn't edit very well. Yeah. Well, uh, we have run out of time, but I want to thank. Oh, wait. Craig, oh. before we close. Yeah, absolutely. Before everybody leaves, can we do a selfie on yeah, my Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. You've got time for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I always leave a little or just for that. Oh, um, good. cool. It's not. So uh, we will, first off, we want to thank you guys for coming out. This is, a, this is the thank most people I've seen in this room all day. Yeah. yeah. And that means a lot to everybody here. So thank you so much. But uh, we also want to thank Michaela Jill Murphy.
You want me to take? If you want to do a corner situation? Yeah, I think so. Ha, 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 ha.